Creative Chocolate Cake Decoration First, add the icing onto your cake and don't forget to scrape off any excess. Then, pour on some chocolate and add some crushed up Snickers on the side. And boom, you have a Snickers cake. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like the video as well. Frosting a cake isn't always very easy. Believe it or not, buttercream comes in many different forms. Buttercream is typically made by whipping up sugar dissolved in heated egg whites to a stiff peak. Then, you whip in butter and vanilla until it's light, fluffy, and delicious. Buttercream is great for stacked cakes, sculpted cakes, buttercream flowers, and even cupcakes. It's not as sweet as the regular American buttercream, which is what most people use for buttercream in the USA. French buttercream, cream cheese buttercream, and Italian buttercream are all delicious as well. No more pan spray, no more shortening and flour, no more parchment paper. Instead, mix up equal parts vegetable shortening or margarine, vegetable oil and flour. Mix well until combined and then store it in a container. You can keep it on the countertop or in the fridge but it will not spoil. Use a pastry brush to brush it on the pans evenly. You don't need a lot, just a nice even coating will do. There are many essentials to cake decorating, but some tools that are pretty much required for anything cake decorating are rotating cake turntables. They are not absolutely essential, but they will make it much easier to decorate your cake instead of running around the table or trying to move your plate back and forth. A serrated cake or bread knife for leveling and splitting layers. An offset palette knife for applying frosting without dragging your fingers through it. Pastry bags with tips. You can use Ziploc bags, but it doesn't work as well. A cake smoother or scraper for smoothing frosting and making decorative marking patterns. Something a lot of cake decorators do is split their job into stages. Cake making and decorating can be quite a bit of work. Baking cakes in advance and freezing them also makes frosting them easier. Frozen cakes don't crumble as much when you frost them and it makes it much easier to apply your crumb coat. Likewise, leveling your cakes is easier with frozen cakes. Cakes will stay fresh in the freezer for up to a week. Indeed, you can also make buttercream in advance and store it in the fridge in an airtight container for up to a week. Using a cake turntable. A cake turntable is literally a rotating platter that you use to turn the cake while leveling and frosting it. Turning the cake rather than having to walk all around the cake makes the whole process much easier. Splitting, also called torting your cake, is more of an intermediate task, which you'd do if you are applying filling inside of the layers. But when you're ready for that, you will use your turntable for that as well.
Level your cakes. It is important because the tops of the layers need to be completely flat. Otherwise, they can lean or wobble when you stack them. This is where your serrated knife comes in. There are serrated cake knives which will work well, but any serrated bread knife will work. Just make sure that the blade of your knife is longer than the diameter of your cake. The goal is then to saw off any dome on top of the cake so that it is perfectly flat. Start the blade at the edge and keep it level while rotating the cake on the turntable, using a sawing motion rather than trying to push the blade through the cake. Don't worry about the bottoms, these should already be flat from the bottoms of the cake pans. In fact, you could flip your cakes so the bottom face upward, but do still level them so the bottoms don't wobble, and don't forget to eat those trimmings. Applying a crumb coat. The next step is to actually frost the cake which starts with applying a crumb coat. A crumb coat is an initial, light coat of frosting that seals and suspends any crumbs, so that when you go to apply the final coat, you won't see any crumbs in the frosting. If you are making a layer cake, position the bottom layer on your turntable, spread a layer of frosting to the bottom layer, then place the top layer on top, bottom side up. Then apply the crumb coat to the whole cake. Then chill the cake for 15 to 30 minutes. This allows the crumb coat to fully set before you apply the final coat of frosting. Applying the frosting. Place the assembled layers on the turntable and apply a mound of frosting. Spread it around with your palette knife while you rotate the cake. Do the sides next. It's best to work quickly so that everything stays cool. But when you're still learning, this may not be possible. So it might help to take a break between doing the top and the sides. Return the cake to the fridge in the meantime. A cake smoother, or a cake scraper, or decorating comb is a flat piece of metal with one flat edge and one serrated edge. It will produce a sharper finish than a palette knife, although a palette knife will do a fine job. To use a smoother, run the edge along the sides of the cake while rotating it in the opposite direction. Piping. Making decorative flowers and other shapes using a piping bag with various tips is something that does take practice. And the same thing goes for writing with royal icing. Of course, there is no substitute for actual cake decorating experience, but a way to practice is on a sheet of wax paper instead of the cake itself. Small, individual flowers can sometimes be transferred from the wax paper onto the cake, although this won't work with edging or writing. Still, it is a good way to practice until you get the hang of it. You can even create molds, as seen here on the screen, and fill them up with your favorite cake batter. Yum, now I'm in the mood for some dessert. Who doesn't love chocolate and raspberries? Delicious! Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe.